That's what you do. Okay, so why am I sitting here? Because we're going to pick up the pace, brother. We are going to do all kinds of stuff now to make this thing unique, uh, but we're going to work on the neck. There's some things to do on the neck. We are going to do the fret work. There's not much to do. It come in nice. Um, we are going to do the matchbooks. There's already fret markers on here, so that's good. We're going to do something really cool with the headstock that's going to match some of this other stuff we're doing on the body like this Whoop. okay and um, let's start with voila the magical mystery oil is waiting to take the headstock away anyway I'm going to do all that stuff on the headstock before I glue it on the body. And we're going to start by running this in and having Tammy sign it because it's not one of my guitars unless Tammy signs the back of the headstock. Oh, yeah. And once we get this covered up, there's going to be a coin going in here. Um, anyway, I'm going to whip through this stuff quick. Then we're going to wire it up. It's going to make sound. We're going to put hardware on it. And then you're going to covet it. And then it's going to go bye bye across the pond or the ocean, whatever they call it. So let's get back to the bench. Let's go. All righty. Tammy has signed this thing. That means that it's going to be all right. I don't have her sign them until we know things are going to turn out and that's getting increasingly easier to do as time passes and i gain more experience but we are going to put a coating on this once we're done but a couple little things that we're going to do before we get the uh nat glued on the guitar because this stuff is a lot easier when you don't have the body uh, floating around so the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our reamer and make sure that everything is lined up for our Grover Imperials I guess that guy in the big truck had to drive over here with the huge tires to see what I'm doing with Grover Imperials so we'll go ahead and get these set um, get them get the mounting holes and everything and make sure that everything lines up so we'll do that and you get little glimpses of me doing this stuff along the way. Now, we flip this over. I have an ex executive decision to make. Um, some people love the matchbooks. Some people do not. It depends on how much they look at the fingerboard, especially while they're getting used to a new guitar. Now, you might figure out that the, the third fret is by the old login matchbook or... Um, some car dealer from the 60s down in um, Clarksdale, Mississippi might be here, whatever. I think we're going to leave this one plain. Some of you will appreciate that. Some won't. Now, we all know that having binding that covers the ends of where the frets, where's the pointer, where the ends of the frets are, that takes a special tool and some kind of talent. So this is actually a good job but we know that as things heat up and wood dries out and becomes hydrated you will end up having little bits of this sticking out so we've got a couple ways to address this you can use a file that's rounded off if that needs to be um, this 10 degree diamond dust file is awesome because you can just do that on each one like so and where you can't feel them you want to pretend you're running the neck your hands up and down the neck or your fingers up and down the neck you certainly don't want to feel that it's a distraction you want to remember that whether they're cognizant of it or not a guitar player when they get distractions like that it takes them away from their attention on what they're doing uh, especially on a brand new guitar that they've never had before even if it looks like a junky old guitar you always want to remember when you do this it's going to splay out things so you can do this of course they have covers i've shown you that before and then you have this nifty little fret dressing file that has no file teeth on the bottom 
or on the top and this one's rounded over a little bit and this is flat so you can come in and put this right on the fingerboard and do your filing and nothing will happen to the fingerboard so we're going to do some of that now the next thing I hate to share my trade secrets but look at this headstock look at the binding this is a really nice binding job I had to protect that and keep it because on the top there's this rows of purfling so you got black white black white black and then so we're not going to cover that part of it up but I do want to junk pile this thing up with what well that's a mystery look that fits right up there so what I'm going to end up doing is if you lay the headstock down and trace it out like so and then cut this out you can figure out from this where everything's going to go of course our nut is right there we already know the width of it right there and we know that we're going to have a coin i'm going to let out the secrets from parchment penitentiary brutal place and that's going to sit right up here but i want to put metal on this and this is what your headstock is going to look like with a coin right in the middle of it do you know who the mast marvel was m-a-s-k-e-d marvel look that up and find that out but anyway so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to carefully use oak gall ink to come in and stain this and then cut the can down where there's just enough of this sticking out where you can see that there's the same color as the rest of the neck right around the edge here and then the can will be there now when you're doing this you want to take a pencil and trace out where your uh, truss rod nut is going to be and the cutout for that but um, that's pretty much what I'm going to do this neck once it's done I'm going to quick touch base with you quick show you what I've done and then we'll glue the thing on the neck and get started on the body All right, guys, check this out. The Oat Gall ink sat pretty well. I'm going to put one more coat on this ultimately, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that the binding is going to stick out like a sore thumb with the purfling. Again, we use the violin maker's knife and just use our thumb as a guide here and scrape that off. 
like so and look at how that pops too you just follow the curves like that like we did on the body now I made this cover out of a Marvel mystery oil can I'm gonna set that there like so and what we need to do is make sure there's holes for the tuners and the truss rod adjustment access port or whatever you want to call it so we just take these little clamps here and put that there and make sure that all of our stuff is sticking out equidistant like so it can be a little rough now we're going to take this all and we're going to go up here where are we right there and we're going to pop that there and there make sure nothing shifted we're going to put one here and here and then we're going to take these chick flick teal screws and mount this down and put based on wherever the tuners are at coming through we'll figure that out in a minute we're going to ultimately end up with another set of screws here once that's down we can flip this over like so and look and see where the center of these are take an owl punch that through all not an owl punch that through and then open those up for the tuners all right there we go clean one owner that says Mississippi State Penitentiary Parchman the infamous Parchman farms there we go that's not going to be spent in a prison again I guarantee you all right this time for spills and thrills and danger has come and I am still wearing the clown suit it's getting late in the evening but I have the hide glue heater over here catch a glimpse of that right there you see that and I have everything ready to finally glue the neck onto this guitar so a couple things I want to show you I have half of what is a neck pulling jig that I showed you how to do in another episode if I have a card I think I will give you a link right about there right about now about how to make one of these but I'm gonna put the body of the guitar notice that there's cork board cork paper there and notice that this is arched so we really don't want to crank it down too much but we want to get this part where the body is laying on the cork paper we have another piece of cork paper here it's going to go up here and we have taken two clamps that's all it's going to take notice that when this thing is sitting up here and I can adjust this I can clamp underneath and whatever but when we get the neck on we're going to put this on the top and clamp and the clamps are padded we basically have the body set up now the neck will fit well I've sanded just a little tiny bit it didn't take much at all and we are going to put glue hide glue you don't want to use tight bond use hide glue in case something happens where you have to take this off if you use hide glue you can heat it up and take it off if you don't you won't be able to it's just that simple so argue that anyway we're going to take a brush and we're going to paint all the mating surfaces no the regular mating surfaces su surfaces anyway the hide glue is nice and hot i've had it heated up and so we're just going to come along and get this all covered up you want to make sure that you you've got a rag with some hot water the hide glue heater has two chambers one for that okay And the nice thing about hide glue is your working time is a lot better as long as the hide glue stays warm. But we want to make sure that we get 
all of this covered evenly. And remember, these neck pockets, they don't slide in this way. They need to drop straight down. So we don't need to put glue on here because this sticks here. When we're working this, we want to be really careful because this piece of wood right here is thin and pretty fragile. But looking here, we're going to go along the sides here. I want to be careful with this. We want to get this part here. This goes up against the guitar here. It sits there, the bottom. This edge right here is going to sit up here and here. Again, this doesn't need to be coated. Don't be shy. And this side is going to line up right there and it's going to come to right there and this is not like paint hide uh oat gall ink is not like paint it doesn't skim over or something it's a natural surface so There we go. I can start to feel it tack up, and I want to make sure there's nothing down in the corners. All right, it slipped right in. I'm going to get a little bit of this off of here right away because we're going to be tied up for a minute here. I'm going to put that over the top like this, and then we're just going to come in. You want to make sure that this is even. You want to tighten one up all the way because you're going to end up with a neck that's tilted like this. If we do that, we don't want to do that. This neck pulling jig comes in very handy. Oh, before I forget, the end of your small paintbrush wrapped around a wet towel, and you can go right in to where these edges are, where the squeeze out is, and take care of those like so. We're going to need a little bit of touch up once we figure out what the glue did to the oak gall ink but it's going to turn out just right again the kit came with everything okay there's no big gaps i could take a feel or gauge but all good okay guys last little trick i want to show you a couple things you need a suction cup like so and you need something to wet it with besides your spit anyway if you don't have some use your spit and you need a glue syringe like this because when we're getting down to the final details, when we have everything put together, let me see if I can spin this around and get the right camera angle. Can you see that? I think you should be able to right there. I can take this glue syringe and go along this edge right here. Now it all looks good. Sometimes you get a little gap, especially right there at the end. Now I can take my suction cup and wet it. You don't want to pull up and down on the suction cup. You want to start at the end and move through it straight like that. 
because if you go up and down, the same suction that's pushing the glue down is going to pull it back up when you move it. So then you just go along like this. And I can come along here. This thing gets in where other things won't. Take the wet rag. Take my finger, wet it a little bit. Push that in here. Now there's going to be some touch up to get rid of the shiny on this. And then finally, we'll flip it over this way and see how this side looks. Of course, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're not cranking the guitar around too much. But, see it lays that nice little bead in there, like so. And... Bingo. There's no gaps. Look at that. Okay, guys, I love this Stumac workstation because it puts the guitar in just about any position, especially good for use with the overhead autopsy cam up there. Yeah. So, you ready for a, a little brief before and after? Here. Something is bothering me, and you know what happens when things bother me. I like this dull, it's going to be shiny, but it's still going to be dull, blacked out look. But to be honest with you, this rosewood fretboard, that doesn't go with everything there. It just kind of, it kind of looks like you put your formal dining room together with yard sale stuff. So what are we going to do about that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is recognize that. When people do fingerboards, they put all kinds of oils and God knows what on it. So, we're going to take some lighter fluid. I know you're freaking out, but go ahead and freak out. And we're going to make sure that there is nothing on this fingerboard. Fingerprints, whatever. You got that? Watching that? Check that out. Okay. Now, see how quickly... That vaporizes off. Now we're going to take some steel wool double quadruple aught zero 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 steel wool and we are going to steel wool the fretboard. This is going to kind of rough it up and open it up in a little kind of way. Now whenever you use steel wool you're going to end up with steel wool particles that you don't want. They end up being attracted to the magnet on your pickup. So what do you do? You take a luthier magnet. Now watch this. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. It's magic, you know. Anyway, I wouldn't tell you anything if you would never believe it's not so. Look at that. All that came off of this. Again, you don't want this stuff on the magnets on your pickups. These luthier magnets are cool. Now... I want you to take your rag one more time, if I can find mine, and one more time with the lighter fluid rag. Now you'll notice that a steel wool shined up these frets real nice. That's not what we want. We want it to look old. Take a brush like this, not a pointed brush, but a brush, a brush that has squared off ends. And then we're gonna take our little bottle of oat gall ink and we are going to go along here and this comes in handy because when you get to the edges and where the frets are you can just work this right down in here you just really don't want to get it all over the binding on the edge we're going to take care of a little bit of that as we go but now here's where you turn side of the brush over, over, and that little bleed off for getting on the fret markers. Don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that in a little bit. But this is kind of like putting on matchbooks without the matchbooks. See that? Now the closer we get to the end, the closer the frets come together. And... You would think I'd done this at least one other time, right? Don't get me to lying. Let 
you remember, Oak Gall ink gets darker as it dries. Now, what will end up happening is at some point, some of the Oak Gall ink will fade off because this isn't a paint. It's going to soak right in to the wood. And so you'll get these marks like guitar players that don't know what finger clippers are, fingernail clippers, and then you end up with all those grooves that nobody knows what caused them. Yeah, they're fingernails. Trim your fingernails. Eddie Van Halen didn't need a manicurist with extension nails to play his guitar, so I, I don't think you should have a fear of a nail clipper. There we go. And we're going to go along wherever the stuff is trying to bleed. We get to it, but we're going to go over this, and you're going to find out that this is going to turn pleasantly dark because guess what, peeps? I think of everything I had already done the top few frets. Do you see the difference? Done, not done, done, not done, done, not done. Okay. All righty. Let me finish this, and then you'll get to see my whole beautiful self in the chair in a minute. All right. There we go. End of episode two. I can't let this playlist go on too long because I only have a certain number of fingers. Playlist link right up there or at the end of the video. Now, you might ask yourself, isn't that same shirt, doesn't that look familiar? Is the end of the last episode? Well, let me tell you something. If you're smart, you're going to come up to two conclusions. One is that I filmed both episodes, one right after the other, the episode closes, and did some Hollywood uh, fast tricks to get them in here. By the way, Hollywood's on strike. Or that I never changed my clothes. And I'm going to let you solve that riddle here in a minute. In a minute. Give me a like and a subscribe. Now we're going to go into hot rodding this thing up. It's going to get the body dressing. It's going to get the electronics. And it's going to be everything that you could ever want but never need. Okay, so back to the question. Do I film the episode ends like back to back and edit them in? Or do I just never change clothes and well here's your opportunity to find that out go ahead have a whiff